Hello, everyone. Ron Spomer with our third. Yes, I believe this is our third <laughs> podcast with the YouTube channel rolling. So I've got to get all these numbers straight one of these days. But bear with us while we get this whole program running. Now, my producer, Silas Pippet at Red 11 Media is a slave driver. He has me doing videos and blogs and now podcasts. And he suggested that I read questions, unprompted, unscripted He'll just pull some comments and questions from our fans and throw them in front of me. And I was handed a piece of paper. Trust me, I haven't seen these before, but I'm about to see them now. <laughs> so we're going to answer from uh, Clayton. He asks us, what are the pros and cons of fluted barrels? Oh, that's a good one. Fluted barrels are an interesting phenomenon. Popped up about, gosh, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. And the idea was that they would strengthen your barrel and cool it. Well, I got questions about this strength at business. Think about what happens when you flute a barrel. You have a rounded circumference on a barrel, and then you cut some reverse concave grooves down the length of that barrel. And they can be longitudinal or they can be spiral or interrupted and just all sorts of crazy things. That increases the surface area of the barrel that is actually touching the air. I think that sounds right. So you've got the rounded circumference of the original barrel, and then it dives down into the concave of the flute, and then up and down and up and down. So you've increased surface area. That should increase cooling. So that might work. I haven't tested it, but it makes sense. Strengthening the barrel, I don't see how removing material from a, a barrel can strengthen it. It can't be stronger. So the benefit might be that you're going to cool that barrel if you're doing a lot of rapid shooting. It might cool down a little bit faster. Then again, you have less material in the barrel, so it should reach a higher temperature more quickly as well. So that sounds like a wash to me. Now there is uh, a con, I believe, in the look of the barrel. If you like that look, there it is. Um, and you're also going to lose some weight. So you might shave an ounce or two or maybe even three off of a barrel. So it would probably make sense on an ultralight setup. But boy, other than that, I can't think of. Can you guys think of any improvements to a barrel's performance by putting those grooves into it? I just am not coming up with anything but that. So that's my answer, Clayton. Now, this one is from Harry. Harry asks, would you own the Sauer S1000 Field Shoot 308? I am not sure what the Sauer S1000 Field Shoot 308 is, but I am familiar with some Sauer rifles, and I am always impressed with the quality of those. I've worked with the 100 and the 101 and a little bit with the 404. Those are all bolt actions. So I'm not really sure what the field shoot is. And unless I do some research, I can't answer that for you, Harry. Perhaps I can come back to it and respond to your email question here. Um, but I would guess that if it has all the bells and whistles you want in a rifle, whether it's a heavyweight, heavy barrel, or a lightweight, or a mountain rifle, or a balance, whatever you're looking for, as far as the quality, just based on the company I know and the quality I've seen in their rifles before, I think you would probably be happy with it. And of course, the 308 Winchester cartridge, if it's chambered in that, that uh, again is up to you. If you like the 308 and it does what you need it to do, there is certainly nothing wrong with it. In fact, I have called it in the past a Goldilocks cartridge because it really does pretty much everything and anything. I used to say that about the 30 6 and I still do, but increasingly more people are interested in the 308 because the performance of that particular 30 caliber just about matches the 30 out stick, a 30 out six. Obviously, it is shorter version of the 30 out six, so it can't possibly come up to the same velocities. But you'll get within 100 feet per second, and then you'll have it in a short action. And a lot of folks like the lighter, quicker, short actions. And everybody loads ammunition for the 308 Winchester. That is definitely one of its strong points. So you have a cartridge that's available just about everywhere, easy to hand load, and there's such a wide variety of ammunition available for it. Not just 150 grain bullets to 180 grain, but there will be factory loads with 200 grain bullets and 125 grain bullets and everything and anything in between. And a lot of bullet 
types. You're not just stuck with your, your typical cup and core bullet and maybe one or two controlled expansions. You should be able to find just about every kind of premium and sub-premium and even varmint bullet on the market loaded in some factory ammunition. And of course, if you're a hand loader, you can make anything you want. Good question, Harry. And let me know if you find out how effectively that sour S1000 field shoot rifle really is. All right, this next question comes from Lewis, Lewis B. What would the boat tail bullet's performance be in a 3030? Oh, there's a good question. I've been getting uh, questions along this line here now for some time because a lot of hand loaders will fool around with the 3030 knowing that they can improve its performance with better bullets. One of the reasons the 3030 is limited to about 200 yards is the rather low ballistics coefficient bullets that are put on it. And those are usually round nose or flat point. And you have to have that flatter meat plat or flat nose on those bullets because when you're loading them in a typical tubular magazine, the kind you'll see under a Winchester 94 or the Marlin 336 or the Henry rifles now, those tubular magazines stack your cartridges with the bullet tip against the primer of the cartridge in front of them in that magazine. And then if there's heavy recoil, those bullets can jar back and forth, and the theory being that a sharp tip bullet could act like a firing pin. Whether or not this happens is debated quite a bit. There have been some tests conducted that show that it never happened, but then again, I've heard that there's some tests conducted in which it did happen, and you can imagine if you have five rounds stored in a magazine, and the first one <laughs> sets off the one in front of it, you've got a chain reaction that's not going to be pretty. So that's why you have the blunt bullets in your 3030. So what happens if you put a boat tail on it? Boy, I don't think it's enough to bother with. Changing the base of your bullet from a flat to a boat tail is going to have minimal impact or change to your ballistics coefficient. Yeah, it helps a little bit, but even that little bit isn't really going to be noticed until you're out there at 300 yards or farther. So I don't think I'd get too excited about picking up a boat tail. Now, if you can combine a boat tail bullet with a sharp spire point bullet on that 3030 you're going to improve your ballistics coefficient enough to appreciate some benefits at 200 yards um, and i think the upshot is that you could probably extend your range with that setup to 300 yards depends on the bc of the bullet but you know it darn well there are some great high bc 30 caliber bullets out there that you could push the trouble is with bc you always get a higher bc bullet given a standard form or shape with the heavier bullets because they're going to be longer and that increases your ballistics coefficient too. So does the increased mass. You can't put a lot more mass into a 3030 than about 165, 70 grains. Bullets heavier than that in the 3030 just aren't going to be moving very quickly. You don't have the powder capacity in that shell to really drive it all that fast. But I think a good option are some of the 165 grain bullets with sharp tips and boat tails. You get your BCs up pretty high on those. The problem is, again, that tip against the primer. So unless you have a two-shot model 94, 336, or Henry, uh, you can only have one round in the tubular magazine and then one in the chamber, you'd be fine. So you've got two nice shots with some really high BC bullets that are going to be stretching out there. Pretty good long range and minimizing your wind deflection, not a bad option. And I think this is what a lot of hand owners, or hand loaders are fooling around with because they will write me and say, hey, I'm getting X feet per second out of my 3030 with this super boat tail spire point IBC bullet. Na, 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 which I don't doubt. But you have to be extremely careful when you do things like this because someone gets a hold of that 3030 who doesn't understand this, shoves it into a tubular magazine behind another round in front of it, and the sharp tip sets it off. There's uh, trouble to be paid. So I don't recommend anyone but an experienced hand loader do this. And as a matter of fact, for legal reasons, I don't recommend anyone does it. I know it is done, but then so are a lot of stupid things. I'm not saying that you're stupid if you do this, but it is a little bit iffy. Now, here's the upside. 
Hornady makes a great rubber-tipped bullet with a sharper profile and a higher BC, and they have factory ammunition loaded in it. So it's the flex tip bullets on these Hornady rounds that really increase your BC and your reach. And I think they add a good 25 to maybe even 50 yards of performance to a standard 30-30 load. So look for that Hornady ammunition with the flex tip bullet, and I think you're probably doing it the way you want to, as closely as you want to, and well, a lot more safely than using those hard tip bullets we would typically use in a 308 or a 30 at six. All right, great question there from uh, Lewis. Now, this is from Tim F. And he asks, What do you think of the 300 PRC? Ah, I just did a blog, a video, both on the 300 PRC. And I compared it to the 300 Winchester Magnum because those two cartridges look pretty similar. They're about the same length. Um, the advantage that the PRC has is that while it has the same rim diameter and head diameter as the 300 Win Mag, it does not have a belt around the head. Thus, it does not step down from the 0.532 diameter to the 0.513 body diameter that the Winchester has. What does that mean? It means you've got more room for powder. So you have increased powder capacity in the PRC. But that does not add significant feet per second advantages over the 300 Winchester Magnum. So why fool around with this PRC? One reason is that some people just don't like belts on their cartridges. They think that it interferes with effective hand loading. And if you're not a hand loader, I don't think it's a problem at all. I've never had any feeding issues with belted Magnums. My gosh, they've been around since... 1912 when the 375 H&H came out with it, and everybody loves that round. 300 H&H, &H, the Roy Weatherby Magnums were built on that. A lot of them and the Winchester 300 Mag, the Remington 7 Rem Mag, and yeah, that. so I don't worry about that belt. But what they did with this PRC was they tuned the load and the rifles that are going to be chambered for it for maximum precision with extremely long bullets. So obviously the first thing they do is they put a fast twist barrel in them. They're recommending, I think, a one in eight twist, whereas a 300 wind mag will have a one in 10 twist. So you're going to be able to stabilize those longer bullets, 230 grains, even to 250 grain. So even though you're not pushing them all that faster, you're going to get improved performance, especially in your wind deflection. And you're going to retain more energy downrange. Higher BC bullet means more efficiency. They don't waste their energy pushing air out of the way. They slip through it, retain more energy, more velocity, and there's less drop. So there's your improved performance. To get that, though, they have a special chamber cut in those PRC rifles. And the SAMI specs for the chamber are different than they are for the 300, not just in dimensions of the case, but in the throat and the lead in front that allows you to shoot a longer bullet and seat it out farther. You can seat bullets out far in your 300s, but then your cartridge probably isn't going to fit in the magazine, and it's probably going to jam into the rifling of the barrel because the throat isn't long enough. So there's advantages there. And then the final advantage that I've seen is the throat diameter of the chamber is minimal. In other words, you have a 308 caliber bullet. How much room in the chamber around that bullet once it's chambered is there? And I think on the 300 Win Mag from back in the old days, and we're going back to 1963 here, that diameter was 0.315, I believe. On this PRC, it's 0 0.3088. So it's just that 10 thousandths of an eight ten thousandths of an inch wider diameter that is tight so that bullet is going to be sitting perfectly in line with the bore and that always improves accuracy so that's the advantage of the prc figure you're going to get perhaps 50 feet per second maybe 100 feet per second more velocity than the 300 winchester magnum but you should be able to shoot longer more efficient Heavier BC bullets are going to put more energy on target, and it's probably going to be easier to maximize the accuracy in that particular rifle just because of all those designs. Great question, Tim. Now we have Tom P., and Tom asks, would the 6mm ARC bullet outperform the 6.5 Grendel in a hunting scenario? Boy, that's a tough one. Because I have not hunted with either of those other than some varmints with the Grendel. And doesn't take much to get performance on the little ground squirrels in the hayfields. 
and I've not worked at that 6ARC. Now, I know that is really popular in the AR platform and arguably one of the most efficient cartridges to use in an AR for smaller animals and even up to deer. We all know that the 6 millimeter bullet, 243 Winchester, 6 um, Rem, yeah, 240 Weatherby, and now the 6 millimeter Grendel, those have been effective deer bullets for a long time. Uh, but the ARC is a pretty short little cartridge, so that is not going to be driving that bullet all that fast, so you're not getting a lot of horsepower out of it. But it also doesn't have a lot of recoil, so you can really shoot it accurately. So folks who are looking to park that bullet exactly where it belongs, which is always a way better deal than throwing a really big, heavy, hard-hitting bullet where it doesn't belong, <laughs> are going to do pretty well with it. So I hear a lot of reports about how effective it is on whitetails. But the, the 6.5 Grendel, pretty much the same deal, but it's going to have a heavier bullet. And that also has a real mild recoil. So I would say the toss-up on actual shooting of the rifle, that is going to be even Steven. Take your pick. And once the bullet gets there, yes, you're going to have a little more energy in that 6.5 Grendel. Your bullet diameter is going to be a smidge wider. Some people think that makes a major difference. I don't think it does. There's such a small step between 6 and 6.5. I mean, you're going from 0.243 inch to 0.264 inch. Not a lot of increased diameter on that bullet, but you're going to have a little bit more weight in it and you're going to throw it a little bit faster. So I would uh, put my money on the Grendel, but yeah, you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't offend me if you gave me either one and said, go take a deer, Ron. I'll be happy to hunt with both of them. So those are the questions I had today from Silas. Thanks a lot, Silas, especially for not giving me one that completely stumped me. That would be embarrassing. I don't know what's going to pop up next time. We'll see what Silas has in, in uh, store for me, but I'm guessing there could be a lot more of these questions. Now, my answers to these questions are just coming out of the old gray matter, and that hard drive has been overstuffed for quite a while, so it doesn't always load up properly, so you want to double-check anything I said. Yeah, there's no doubt that I make mistakes from time to time, and, uh, well, I guess I'll apologize for them, but to be honest, I can't get it all right every time, guys, I try, but I depend on you to help me out here, so if you catch me making an error, minor or major, let us know about it, and we'll correct it. Uh, we just want to give you the best information we can. And don't forget, you can also go to our website, ronspomeroutdoors.com, where we have a lot of blogs on this material, and as well as provide access to RSO TV, where we do extended videos on hand loading and guns and shooting and hunting and all the things we can't necessarily show on, uh, on these commercial channels. Um, and you can find another YouTube channel, that's Ron Spomer Outdoors, where we do a lot more details on ballistics and bullets and all the kind of detailed information hunters like. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.